I am part of a broader uh, community outreach section through Fire and Rescue. Beth Ann Nesselt manages a big chunk of that. We have uh, folks specific to seniors. We have sp folks specific to school age children. We have car seats and everything else like that. Uh, I consider myself to have won the prize working with the seniors because these folks that we have in this county are just incredible people. Brilliant people, very, very talented and so on, but they have a problem. And the problem is that nobody looks up to see what the condition of their smoke alarms are, to have an idea where the exits are in their homes and things like that. We have a big problem out there where, uh, as Chief Goldstein mentioned, where seniors are at risk of fires and fire injuries and fire deaths at rates that are extraordinary compared to what the rest of us have. It has to do with their cognition and their ability to, or their inability to recognize that there's a problem and also the psychomotor stuff, the physical ability to be able to quickly respond. When we have communities who use walkers and canes and wheelchairs, that's who we're at risk with. When there was the fire at Leisure World, and Jim, you you were there the next day just like we were, but and you might have been there that day during the fire. We, but but you really did a wonderful job e explaining to the, the the people there, the residents that, that were at that meeting, first off what happened and how it happened, and, and that you know there was no loss of life other other than a um, than a cat that that did not live, but otherwise there was no human life that was lost. And it really was comforting to see to see you there, and of course the the people certainly applauded our, everyone's efforts for literally that day and and the day before. But it really was comforting to have you there, and I and I I, I applaud you for it as well. And then the other thing is really it's a great idea about wheels on uh, meals on wheels, because it's not only that the person who's coming to the door knows the person who's serving them for the the meals, but it and so it gives it gives the the firefighter and every the police officer whoever's with them another form of, of credibility and it gives the person a form of credibility because they know that a, a public you know, a public safety person's aware of them but it also allows that person to have another contact with a with a human being yes. and and you know so often we just don't take that we take that for granted whereas we shouldn't you know if it's 105 degrees and they have a fan that's that's not helping them I mean it, it's it's not to say it's it makes it any worse, but it certainly doesn't make it a whole lot better. So you only have 50. Yeah. And, and you only have 50, which is another little problem. But I, and and of course they, they've now, and I don't know how effective they are, and if they're if there's something that, that we should be looking at. But they have these portable uh, air conditioning units now. I don't know whether that would be something that that we should be looking at that that or that, that in some way we should be doing some background that when it's that hot and someone's life is literally in danger, and if someone can't can't leave their facility. I mean, you're, you're saying, we were saying before that there's people with Meals on Wheels that can't come to the door. Mm -hmm. And unless the, the fire and, uh, and, and uh, rescue people take them out, it, it, there's a problem. So I think we need to have a better coordination in what we're doing.